Welcome to Wednesdays with Willa. I am your host, Willa White, and this is my weekly podcast show that airs on Wednesday mornings at 10 a.m. Eastern on my Facebook page, Willa White Medium. It's an opportunity for us to have a spiritual conversation, usually regarding spiritualism, mediumship, healing, faith, family, and more. And I typically have a special guest on the show, and today I'm delighted to have with me Colin Bates. Thanks for being here today, Colin. Oh, thank you. It's wonderful to be with you all again and share this time of the heart and of the spirit. Always a joy. Absolutely. Absolutely. And those of you who don't know who Colin Bates is, he is a wonderful medium from the United Kingdom, from across the pond, as it were. And he's a mediumship tutor at Arthur Finlay College in Stansted, England. He's also been featured uh, in the Netflix documentary, Surviving Death. And he's a spiritual teacher, and he's been a guest on the show before. We've done healing grief through mediumship and also spirit and palliative care. So I encourage you to look back at the archive videos of past shows. You can find those on my Facebook page, Willow White Medium. You can also find them on my YouTube channel. This show also goes out live on Blog Talk Radio dot com slash lilydale radio so that's an audio only feature if you'd like to tune in that way but uh, most people join me here on facebook or on youtube and it's a, a wonderful podcast that we go for about 45 minutes to an hour having a wonderful conversation and today our topic is transformation of the soul and it's certainly an exciting topic because so many people are wondering how does that even happen <laughs> so we're we're going to break that down for you a bit today so take it away colin <laughs> oh wonderful well first and foremost you know what an absolute joy it is to be with you willa once again and you know with this wonderful gift of modern technology we have this instantaneous moment where we are together as one. We know that science has now acknowledged that we live in what we call non-local reality, where time and space doesn't exist, and that the spirit is united instantaneously. And more and more, you see, throughout our lives and the journey of life, we're starting to look and to explore the journey itself and that's why this is such a wonderful topic transformation of the soul transformation of the spiritual journey and really we are acknowledging that we are eternal beings of light and that the mind the physical aspect of life is that which dominates throughout our lives because that is really how we live that is how we think how we create you see through the power of the mind but we also know you see that it is only part of the greater story of life that actually that we are spirit here and now and that the vehicle of the spirit is the soul itself it is the essence the true essence of you and i and i personally believe you see that we are unique each one of us, although collectively we are a part of the divine essence of all life, the power of creation, the many faces of the great mystery of all life. But actually within us is this uniqueness and no two people are ever the same, you see, because we cannot. We cannot experience the same. We can, you know, look at each other. We can experience each other's lives in a way, but we can never be in the same moment within each other. Although collectively, you see, we are connected. Mm -hmm. In the whole of the universe, there is no one who is like you. In your individuality is your beauty. And everything that you need for the journey within this life is already there, for it is already a part of you and I. And I truly believe, you see, that we have been before and that we will be again, but we will never be quite the same. This experience of this time and this moment and those that we know and those that are a part of our journey will remain, you see, a part of our experience eternally. 
but there are other aspects and other experiences that create the totality of the soul. I'm convinced of it. And so there are many different experiences that we have, and that is where the different lifetimes comes into being. They are interconnected, but they are also a separate experience. It's the only way you see that I can that I can bring it into my own sense of understanding. I've had people come to see me and say, you know, I'd love to speak to my mother, but she's already incarnated. And I think, oh, isn't that marvelous? She's already on her way again. And then I'm listening to the mother in my ear and I say, well, you know, I'm not discrediting what you're saying to me, but the essence of your mother and how she connects to you is eternally a part of your own relationship. And that still is here because I'm listening to her. She's here. She's wanting to talk and communicate with you. So the interconnectedness of life, I truly believe, is of the moment and that we are connected through this friendship and fellowship, but there are actually other experiences that we also have that create the totality of the journey itself. Now, as we speak about the journey of the soul, it is one of transformation. It is transformative to self. I do, I do honestly believe that. And that I also believe that everyone throughout the world, you know, we are all interconnected, however people may feel about race, colour, creed, etc. We all come from the great same source, and that is the mystery of all life. And, and so whatever our personal belief may be, whatever pathway we may follow, we are all of the same moment of creation, because we are, truly. And can you imagine what a great, what a great revelation, what a great revolution would be created by that one sentence? You know, if all of mankind stopped for a second and realized, you know, that, you know, we may have different thoughts, we may have different lives, but the soul itself is interconnected through the divine spark of all life. And that really, I believe that that is the message of the spirit that has always been the message of the spirit. I continue, I exist, therefore I am. And that you and I are a part of this great and universal journey that never ends and ultimately moves us into the becoming one with the source of life itself. You know, when everything is done, when everything has moved forward, within our own learning, within our own consciousness. I truly believe that we, we move into merging with the one source itself. And through the power of prayer, you know, we touched upon healing before. What is it that we do? We acknowledge, we merge, we become one. We support the power itself that knows all, loves all and understands all can mark the fall of a single bird and the growth of a blade of grass. And you cannot be where God is not. You cannot be where that love and compassion does not exist, except within our own mind, you see. And that really is part, I believe, of the transformation, is the realising, the recognising and the embracing of that simple fact that we are more than the physical being, that life exists beyond this physical existence, that our thoughts are a living energy. And because we are so immersed in the physical life, you know, the wonder of life is often muted because we live in the facts and figures. I've got to do this, I've got to do that. You know, this takes my time, this takes everything that I am. But when we truly begin to realize that, yes, the mind dominates the physical life, but there is an inner power, there is an inner spiritual knowing that is coming more and more, you see, to the full, to the fullness of life. And I believe mankind is starting to move more and more. I see it in so many countries where those that are born and the generations coming that are yet to be to the fullness of life 
are starting to seek that within themselves that guides them within their life and within their journey, you see. Mm -hmm. And so uh, this realization is, is starting slowly, slowly to touch more and more people. And that's really where the transformation begins. It starts first individually, it has to. And this is where really the awakening and the desire comes into being. And because we are at all different stages of personal, spiritual, physical development, because we are within life, you know, we are born into the circumstances, the people, the time, the places. We are influenced by all those that are around us. We are told how we should be, how we should behave. And even, you know, in the sense of the spiritual aspects, the religious aspects, we are often told this is how you should be. This is how you should live. And you see people now, I truly believe, are starting to look beyond that, to say, well, actually, I, I, I can follow what you're telling me because it is about leading a life that honours life and people and places. But also, I'm seeking to find my own way. I'm seeking to embrace my own truth, my own inner light and being. And I'm seeking to... Um, to find what is right for me. And of course now, so many of us are struggling because of what has happened within the last two years. We are now more and more starting to reflect, I believe, inwardly to find that strength, to embrace what is right for us. And in so doing, you see, we're moving away from the physical mind. You see, and if we look at this scientifically, because we do love a bit of science every now and then, we have the beta, the alpha, the theta, and the delta states of being. Well, we live, you see, in the physical mind, but we know that through such moments as inspiration, meditation, contemplation, sitting within the silence, embracing the power of the spirit, that we move into a different awareness. We start to become aware that there is actually another world, although we live in the physical world, but it's often muted, you see, by the physical mind. And that we then begin to experience on another level. And I believe, you see, that we come into times of light and knowledge but we also touch people within our lives that are like the signposts of life. Something awakens a thought within you and I, mm -hmm. and that thought as it awakens, starts us to seek, to find. And I call it the, the pathway of, really, it is a pathway of discipline, but it is also the pathway of the disciple, mm -hmm. the seeker and the searcher, of truth, which is really who we are. And you see, however this igniting of seeking comes, I believe it touches each one of us at different times within our lives that starts the journey and begins to unfold the journey. I remember somebody who came to see me and she said, you know, I wish to heaven that I had known and followed this 50 years ago. And I said, well, what were you doing 50 years ago? She said, well, she said, I was giving birth and managing all my children and everything. I said, well, don't you think that one of the greatest gifts you can ever give within the universe is to create the opportunity for another soul to manifest the physical life and existence and to love and to nurture them within the journey, which in turn illuminates your life, your light and the love and the compassion, which is the power of the creator within your life. Then all of a sudden she stops, she's like, oh, I hadn't thought of it that way. And this is why more and more, you know, we look at the living life 
and what we do in life and what we create in life and how we interact with others within life itself. And that is part of the transformation. I mean, it is the transformation because all life is continuously moving. It is evolving in its way. And we begin to realize, and it is often within those moments that is unexpected, that something illuminates something within us. It touches the core of our being. You know, when we look at the heart, you know, it is the temple. It is the light of our inner being where forever love dwells and exists, you see. You know, it, it, it's considered to be the castle of creation, the light of creation. When we look at compassion and we look at the understanding of another person's need, it comes from the soul itself. True prayer. When we, when we pray, it doesn't come from the mind. It comes from here, comes from the seat of the soul. And that when we commune with God, with, with the power itself, however we choose to perceive it, we are uplifted and the soul is reminded of its own divine heritage, you see. Well, that's what healing is. Mm -hmm. So it all interconnects, you see, I believe you know, with each other, but as the heart. And I always say, and when I'm teaching, think not with the mind, but feel with the heart and know with the soul, for it will guide you upon your pathway and take you to that place of belonging. Because that's what I believe we are all seeking now, mm -hmm. is to find that place of belonging within ourselves, to embrace that, knowing of peace which inspires love and compassion for each other but it must also touch and inspire and unfold and transform ourselves because this knowledge this light this love is for everyone but it's also got to be in here for us and that's really, I believe, where the great transformation takes place, you see. Because once we begin to embrace life, and once we begin to embrace the fact that we are eternal beings of light, that we don't just cease to be, that the love, that the passion, all that we are, and all that we create is the eternal you and I then it must make a difference, it's got to. Because you then begin to realize that this is who I am. This is who I am a part of. And yes, we go through all these times of different choices, different aspects, different moments within life. But all of a sudden we begin to realize that we're not alone that we are intrinsically connected to this extraordinary truth, this light, this love, this living, because it's a living energy of life. Then we begin to be uplifted, we begin to be strengthened, and we begin to know that we are loved. And in knowing that we are loved, you see, we begin to become love. And that's really, for me, it's not just the starting point of the transformation. It, it is the totality of the transformation because it really is about life. You know, the journey is not about death. It's not about the destination. There is no death. There is no destination. It is, but this continuous, wonderful, unfolding journey. And we have to begin to realize that we are spirit here and now, and that our own sensitivity is a part of that process. Mm -hmm. And that we need to really start to embrace that in a way that supports us and our journey. And then ultimately, as it supports our own journey, our own light, our own love and our compassion, ignites that within others and supports them. 
So all of a sudden you have a mini revolution because the one becomes two, becomes four, becomes eight, becomes et cetera, et cetera. And so more and more it, it touches each one of us, but seeking to find our place of belonging is about acknowledging our own soul, our own journey, our own wishes, our own dreams. Well, that is a part of life and the journey of life. But there is a presence, you see, within our own spirit. Mm -hmm. And through such moments as finding the quietness within ourselves, whether it is through meditation, whether it is through just simply being, within that moment of stillness, we start to begin to recognize that actually there is more here. There is more within me. You know, when we touch the power of passion and love, it becomes unlimited, it becomes unstoppable. It becomes a force of goodness and of love. And when we begin to experience that, when we begin to wonder and gaze upon the universe, when we touch the presence of the earth, the power of the sea and the sky, and as we embrace it, we really, truly, in essence, become it. Mm -hmm. And as we become a part of the power itself, I believe we become the voice. You know, how often in life, are we within these lovely conversations and all of a sudden you find yourself something and you don't know where it comes from, but it seems to bring hope to someone else. It brings healing, it br brings light, it br brings renewal, just through the simplicity of those words. For within the words is the power of the breath and within the breath itself is creation. And it, it really is as simple as that. And I think sometimes we've complicated our process. You know, we have so many wonderful teachers that tell us wonderful things and say, you've got to do this, you've got to do that, you've got to be this, you've got to be that. No, you haven't. If you're good enough for God, you're good enough for anyone, just the way you are. And it is that light, you see, that is building within you and I and all of us. And whether it starts as just a little small ember, slowly, slowly, it begins to grow. And once we move, you see, into this time of knowledge, it has to change us in some way, uh, morally, physically, mentally, and spiritually. We begin to realize that we are totally and absolutely not only a part of this eternal journey, but we are also a living part of it. And therefore we are also responsible for it. You know, the power of the earth that supports and sustains you and I is intrinsically a part of you and I, for we are influenced by the power of the earth. You know, look at the energy of the empath, you know, where due to our own sensitivity, we can be influenced by the thoughts and the energy of others and even by the world itself. So we have to begin to realize that also as sensitives, uh, we also have to find a way that's right for us where we acknowledge everything, but we're not overwhelmed by it. You know, we teach within mediumship, all emotion flows through me and beyond me, that I'm always with it, but I'm never quite of it well then I am able to speak the words of light and truth but I am not overwhelmed you see when when you help someone it doesn't help them for you to be overwhelmed what they need is the support and the love and the strength and the guidance and ultimately you see it, it is a part of the power itself so life is continually moving and it's continually changing. And I am such a believer in, if something is not right, then it is an indication that there is a problem with the balance of life, either uh, with the mind, the body or the spirit. Something is not in harmony. And so therefore, what is it that you wanna change? 
who is it that you want to be? And then the journey of transformation begins, it starts. And part of that is the belief that you can do it. Because when we believe in something, you see, we start to create it, we start to move with it, we start to become it. But what we also have to remember is that this is not instantaneous. This becomes a way of life, really, and a way of being, and also of honoring the journey, you see. And so slowly, slowly, it starts to move and it starts to change and it starts to grow. And I think what we also have to look at here is that where we are now is influenced by the thoughts and the actions of the past because it's brought us to here, you see. And what we do today creates tomorrow. And so the future is created within the presence of now. Mm -hmm. And so often, you see, when we start to move into the realisation of this incredible journey, we are then influenced by the past. Because when we sit within the quiet and the stillness, what rises is often the emotion of the past. Because remember that within the quiet and the stillness, we actually then... Um, actually then move into such a blending of mind, body and spirit that we then, it's then possible that thoughts from the subconscious rise. Mm -hmm. And that can often be to do with the past and to do with emotion. Mm -hmm. And so when that happens to us, you know, what you must always remember is that the past has no power over you only the energy that you allow it to have. Mm -hmm. And that, yes, we are influenced by it because we are. You know, we've all had people in our lives that have been very negative. And, you know, if someone says to us for long enough, you're no good, you start to believe it. So it's actually about finding that within us that is the strength, that is the vitality, that is the core of goodness mm -hmm. and knowing that it is guiding us. Claircognience, clairknowing. This inner knowing, you see, is the strongest gift of this age. And that more and more what we need to do is we need to listen to it because often it will guide us. And afterwards, you see, we do something. And if we'd listened in the first place, we'd have done it a lot better or we wouldn't have made those decisions. But we also have to acknowledge here our own right to make our decisions, even if they're wrong. You know, free will does exist. You know, I do believe that. Mm -hmm. And so therefore, this transformation and the journey of it is something that is a gradual process of unfolding, of strengthening and of supporting. And it starts, you know, what is it that you want to change? And, and so I'm a great believer in writing things down, you see, and also of experience it as an actuality. Never say I will be, because you'll be waiting till the last trumpet. Always I am, I am that. The first words ever spoken, the first words of creation. And then all of a sudden you are empowered by it. I am strong. I am well, I manifest my power right here, right now. The way of the spirit is my way. Mm -hmm. From the highest that is within me to the highest of the universe, I dedicate myself to the service of the spirit. Such a simple sentence, but my goodness, can you feel how the energy is changing within you, within me, within all of us who are listening? And what you're doing, you see, is you're moving into your power. You're moving into empowering the very senses of the spirit that are a part of you and I and of the universe, because everything is interconnected to the power of the universe. We looked before and discussed the power of healing. 
and using through the power of thought and the wish of the heart that we can then rebalance. And you know, through healing and even through prayer, which is the highest form of healing, it is reminding the soul of its divine connection and of how it is perfect and it is well within itself. And so therefore we can begin to start to change the way that we think, the way that we act. You know, I remember years ago um, within my teams, as many people do, um, I was so angry and I was so angry. I used to forget what I was angry about. And my poor mother, what she must have put through, bless her heart in heaven. And, um, you know, and, and I would have like these rages. And then all of a sudden I, I came into the spiritual pathway very young. I was only 16. My mother dragged me to see somebody and she said, sort him out if you can. And that really started my transformation, bless her heart. And what I learned at that point was that there is not only the possibility of change, but I have the power to make it so. And I started with the simplicity of the word peace. And I've used that throughout the whole of my life. I chant it. And as I chant it, I begin to create it through the vibration of the word and the sound and the stillness and the quiet. So let's look at the pathways of transformation through words, mm -hmm. through the power of words. I am strong. I am well. All in life is good. And all of a sudden, the energy begins to move. It begins to change. So you've got the silence. When you move into the silence, you know, we speak of prayer you know and and when we pray we speak to the great creative force when we sit within the quiet god speaks to us we find our answers they come to us within the quiet and so also you know when we look at life and the journey of life it is continually moving you know and we can support that growth and the unfolding journey of it, or we can stand still. And we can all stand still, but when we start to stand still, we even start to move backwards. So it's also what we put into life that begins to create it, that begins to support it. And I know that we all go through these times of emotion, where we cannot even begin to think about tomorrow because I can't cope with today. And all of us have touched an essence of that over these last two years. But what we don't always, because when we're so involved within it, we don't always realize that there is this, there is this presence within ourselves, that when we just sit and find the quiet and the stillness, that we are surrounded by this extraordinary energy of life, of creation, the power of the earth, our place of belonging, the sea, the sky, the limitless, limitless potential lies within us. And that what we've got to start doing more and more is, yes, honouring everything that we believe, but starting to also honour what we need and taking time to build that, to create that, and above all, to honour it. And when we, when we have had those times of communion, you see, even when you find the stillness and, and you use the sacredness of the breath to become aware of the presence of your own being, of your own spirit, the house of your soul, it then becomes a time of reflection where you can then just move into that moment of being supported, of being strengthened and of being loved and the outside world becomes less and less and the inner world 
becomes more and more because this is where there is the union of the two worlds. It is an inner, it is an inner being. It is an inner moment of becoming one within it. And then when you've had that time, and what I always say is, God will love 10 minutes, but will settle for five. So no one can say you can't give five minutes. No, no, no. And so within those 10 minutes, and you begin to move and find that time of the quiet and the stillness, here is the restless soul, the physical mind. So give the mind something to do, get it to watch the breath, and then it becomes a tool, it becomes a cooperative process. And then when you move into that moment of calmness and stillness, remember the power and the presence of all life is less than a breath away, because it is, in essence, everything that we breathe and everything that we are is a part of the process and so is every cell of our being you see because it is unique and universal as you move into that moment of being and you begin to find it you know whether it is through the power of the silence whether it is through the sacredness of the words whether it is through music however you resonate within that when you've had that time of being and you reflect it, you reflect it to the oneness of all life, you see, there is an interchange of energy that takes place between the physical, the world of matter and the world of the spirit, the universal world. And in such moments, there is actually a learning, there is a transforming, there is a changing of vibration. And that actually, because we are a living vibration, you see, because everything is, although it appears to be solid, it isn't. It is an etheric world. So too is the spirit. So too is our consciousness. So when the physical mind moves into a quietness, our consciousness rises to the source, you see. So in finding that moment of peace, when you find it and within that stillness, because I believe everything that you need for your journey while we reside within this world is already there, okay? Allow it to unfold, allow it to guide you, allow it to teach you that which we need in order to sustain and to grow within life. Because there is a far greater journey, you see, I'm, I am convinced of it. But, you know, before you and I came to this world, there were conversations taking place. Mm -hmm. There were people in the spirit world that were saying, I will be with you, I will support you. And I will come into your life at a certain time that will point the way to where you need to be. And you will be reminded of our love. And so that was before you were even born. And look where we are now and imagine that it's still there, it's still waiting, it's still saying, I'm here. You know, there is a wonderful saying, lead me and guide me, surround me with love, that I may be as thou wouldst be and do as thou wouldst do. Eternal creator of all life, be with me. And in such moments, a great blessing descends upon us and we begin to find the peace, the essence of true life. And within that, you see, we are strengthened. But when you finish, and this is the really important part, well, it's just another part really. When you finish, almost imagine like the wings of love coming back and then keeping that wonderful energy within you so by all means, we can, you know, we can give of our energy ourself to the world. But always remember, keep some of that goodness within you. And that when you're going through times of emotion and you need that strength, then keep it even more within you. 
because I, I, I know beyond anything of this life, not just of that love which supports you and I, but that it is guiding us upon this incredible journey that is leading us ever onward and ever forward. So this continual sense of growth, we can support, we can create change, but you've got to want to change. That's the point. You see, in the sense of the spirit, every thought is known because it is a world of light and mind. Well, in a way, in the soul itself, it is dyed by the colour of its thoughts. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the desire within us is seen by the spirit, by the creative force, because it is a part of each other, you see. So the desire imbues the light with the colours of life. And it is by your light are you known. And so the light of the soul calls to those who need. And that's why you will find people are drawn to you. I mean, someone who follows the healing and the sacred pathway, you know, you will always find people coming to you and just talking to you. And then all of a sudden there is this interchange, whether it's a smile, whether it's a few words, and then all of a sudden, a healing takes place and it takes place through the light that we are and the light that we create. And you see, as, as the journey unfolds, when we begin to support that transformation, it then slowly, slowly starts to change everything. I, I believe that. Mm -hmm. And if you look at your thoughts and your ideas of today, our thoughts and ideas of today should be different from our thoughts and our, our ideas of last year, even maybe of yesterday, because that is how it is continually evolving within itself. And that when we have these times of revelation, because I believe we do, just allow the experience to take you and to unfold naturally. You know, so often we try to create with the mind because it should be this, it should be that, it should be this, it should be that. Well, then it creates what the mind perceives it should be rather than actually what it is. Mm -hmm. And so the story, the narrative is taken up by the mind and is not experienced fully by the soul. I do believe that. And so allowing this time of unfoldment to come into being and realizing that we have this extraordinary ability to check to create change and to empower change you see because the power of will is stronger than the power of mind mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and through love and will we create wisdom andrew jackson davis extraordinary man the Poughkeepsee seer. And, you know, when we begin to accept that, you see, because I don't often believe that we accept fully our own ability, you know, and, and that we are the guiding force of our own destiny. And that through the power of will, we are the doorway to infinity. And that really, you know, when we consider, you know, if we look at the mediumistic as well as the spiritual pathway, the two together create the whole. And that somebody, although the spiritual pathway is more of a practice, it brings us really into the revelation of the humility of life. And so you will never have a problem, you see, because one will guide the other. And, and however you perceive it to be, it's right. So no one is saying you've got to do this, you've got to do that. Really, what we're saying is, be yourself, but let that inner light guide you. And that's where this place of belonging is becoming more and more important to all of us. You know, because we need to embrace that. You know, we need to start, you know, to, to recognise that we can support each other, that we can love each other. 
but we must also learn that we must love ourselves. When you look in the mirror, you will see the power in the face of creation. You've got to love what you see. And so sometimes it's also about learning to love, you see, and acceptance. And within that love and acceptance, all of a sudden we begin to move, we begin to grow. But the universe speaks to us and it speaks to us in many, many ways. The power of creation, which weaves its wonderful web of magic through our lives, speaks to us. And really the learning is to listen. And then as we begin to listen, we begin to experience. And the colors of the soul weave the tapestry of life. And no two tapestries are ever the same. For as they weave their wonderful light and colors into the most extraordinary patterns, you then start to have this wonderful journey. But we have been before and we will be again for we are eternal beings of light. And this is why more and more the world needs you, needs us all to begin to realize that the pathway of life and the unfolding of the soul is one of peace, really. Because when you have peace within the heart, you have joy within the soul. When you have love as the guiding force, you then begin to create the miracles and the miracles of life still exist. But remember, you are the magic that creates the miracle. But within you and I is this extraordinary presence of life that is ever evolving, that is ever changing, that is ever renewing itself. Well, that is life and that is the journey of life. Where is it taking us? What are we learning? It has no answer because it is a continuous experience. So when you look at the journey of life, when you look at the inner knowing of your journey and the embracing of the experiences that you have, know that there is a kindly light that is leading you and I within our journey. And that sometimes the path may meander backwards and forwards and backwards and forwards but then it leads us to where just, just in the distance you see the light and it draws you forward, you see. It draws us nearer and nearer. And then all of a sudden it's like a revelation and you think, I've got it, I understand it. But then all of a sudden you realise it's just a facet of it. And it's wonderful because it's ever changing, it's ever renewing, and it's ever growing. And that's really how we should be. And then when there are those times, you know, when we just need just to be loved and to be loved, accept it. Let the universe guide you. Let the compassion that is omnipresent surround you, each one of us with that incredible love. Let it support, let it guide, because really and truly the transformation is the great becoming. And once that transformation starts, it never stops, it never ends. And you see more and more, this is what is beginning to happen within life and within the journey of life. And what you've got to accept is to believe and when we truly believe, we create faith. And faith is the absolute knowledge mm -hmm. and the absolute realization of that which we wish to be becomes an absolute. And you see, I think more and more, you know, the spirit world is, is continually seeking to bring that message. I'm still here. I still love you. I'm still with you. But how many people within your world have not had the opportunity or the belief to awaken to their own light? We then begin to see that the work is never ending. But then through the power of the heart and the power of prayer, which touches the soul and releases within the mind this wonderful ability 
that 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 is the non-local reality that can be within any point of the universe within a second or less than a moment. We then begin to realize we can heal the world and everyone within it. And then you may say to me possibly, well, what right do I have to pray for someone else? What right do I have to send my thoughts of healing to someone who may possibly say, no, thank you. And then I would answer kindly and say, well, you know, truly when you pray, you pray to the highest of the universe and you also pray to the soul of those people and that within the prayer if it is right within their soul journey may they accept it and may they be blessed by it and then I am not in any way intruding upon your life or your journey I'm just offering compassion you see and within compassion you see there becomes an understanding and really, you know, more and more, I believe that we should treat each other in that way. You know, it doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter what you believe. It is, it is the eternal part of you and I that will always shine through. And, and this is when you begin to see transformation in the eyes of others. Just by the power of our words. You know, so often we touch people whose lives have been broken you know, who have gone through such loss, you know, and, and you see the despair because it, it's as if I, I cannot even begin to imagine. And then all of a sudden through the words that come, the compassion, the acknowledgement of the spirit, I'm still here, I still love you. All of a sudden light seems to come in the eyes and a smile comes and then healing takes place. Because one thing that the spirit will always bring is hope. And whether we choose to acknowledge it or accept it, you and I and each and every one of us is the hope of the future. You know, we often speak of saying we stand upon the shoulders of giants. Well, we are the giants. You know, we take from that which has been, we honor that which has been, but what we are creating is the thoughts and the ideas of today, which will honor and create the future of our world. Because it is, it is a world that is constantly evolving and moving in its stream, you know, and each one of us is a part of that. And for a time, what I, what I consciously thought was we're losing it, you know, because we've been so imbued by this technological age, I can't even say technology, isn't that wonderful? That we're beginning to lose the sense of, of, of listening. We say, you know, we, we are worshiping the great God Google. You know, we are pressing the button to seek to find the answers. And if you're not careful, unfortunately, what will happen is that you'll, we'll, we will begin as a race to forget you see, and, and really, uh, although it is a different world, you know, we must always honour that which is within us, for it will guide you and lead you to that place called home, our place of belonging. And I do honestly believe that. Have I gone on too long as usual? <laughs> Who are it's you? Been, it's been I'm so sorry. beautiful. I... I'm so sorry. I just, once I start, I can't stop. <laughs> People lock me away in the cupboard. I don't dare stop you because it's it's beautiful to see what unfolds. It's like uh, watching a uh, someone compose music, right? Oh, and then right. something comes about that's so beautiful. So I try to be I try to be inspired. I mean, I have notes, and then then what I what I speak or try to speak is an inspiration of that which is needed. So, um, but it is beautiful. But it is but it is an amazing thought, though, isn't it? Don't you think? It is. It is. And it's been so inspirational to listen to you talk because I resonate so strongly with those words. And I know that many others that are, are viewing this today or, or maybe they'll watch this again another time when they really need it, need yeah, to hear. Well, that, that would be, you know, that would, that would really be wonderful because, you know, there's one of saying, nor time nor space can air keep those I love away from me and that we are interconnected and we are eternally interconnected. And I say to my students sometimes, you know, 
I say, well, the fact that we've connected in this way means that you will always have me within your life, mm -hmm. whether it is in this life or the next. Mm -hmm. Such light is granted unto us, we give freely. Mm -hmm. And therefore, we have this ability to connect and to stay connected to each other, to the source, to the power itself. Because always remember, you cannot be where the power is not. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or it's life itself, whatever you choose to call it, it is the creative force of all life. And when you focus and, and, and we, we become a part of that, you find the spirit world because there are facets of it. It's all there, you see. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's wonderful. I mean, I'd love to go to heaven. I don't know that I'd want to stay, but I'd love to go and have a look and have a visit and say, do you do visits? And then just pop up. Or, or I don't know, it, it's non-local, isn't it? So it's a thought. <laughs> and so that was going to say, I'd, I'd pop up to heaven, but of course it's here, isn't it, now? And then just say, well, I'd like to just come and have a look. Andrew Jackson Davis, who I mentioned earlier, I mean, his, his um, expeditions into the summer land and his experiences were extraordinary. You know, the 12 lectures of the harmonial philosophy I mean, if you read some of those, it's extraordinary. So, you know, anything is possible. Just to say, I'd just, but I'd love to visit and, and then maybe pop in for a cup of heavenly tea. So, yeah. Don't you think Thank that you. as mediums, we already do kind of visit to some extent? Well, we do, you see. The point you is. Know, that like, the, I feel the, like I've gotten to know yes. parts of heaven yes. and the people of heaven. Yes, yes. In that way, we do. Yeah. Um, but the more personal experience of it is what I would, my experience of it, you know, I touch everybody else's experience of it. But, you know, I often imagine that I, I, I move my consciousness to heaven and then I'm standing at my grandmother's front door and then I open the door and everyone's there sitting around the table. Yeah. And it's as if time never existed and that they were all there. You see, and, and so it is a reality that, that is, is created through our own conscious thought. Um, but it often fascinates me because it's because it's the world of light and mind. Right. It is also a world of creation. I think that's what happens when we do mediumship, though. We're, we're sitting at the table with the clients, yes. loved ones, and it's happening in those moments in real time. The conversation yes. is occurring. And we're part of that. Isn't and that we become cool? the great listeners and we become the great voice. Mm. In we do, moments. yes. The storytellers of life. That's right. So it is interesting, but I would like to walk the hills. Oh, we've gone on too long. Anyway, we, you're, you're doing such you're a joy, honestly. I thought it's, it's such, such a joyful thing that you are understanding, helping other people understand the awareness of these things. That's such an important aspect of recognizing our own spiritual journey and that transformation that takes place that we move into a state of i want to be a disciple i mm. want to learn more so there's that that seeking quality absolutely that happens in those moments and then as you said we start to move into this greater understanding of belief mm. and true devotion with spirit and creationary force that comes upon us. And as you said, we become the voice. Absolutely. That's and the we're, because we're, that, that spark of God within us ignites and mm -hmm. we're able to do the work of spirit and the work of service. And that you're right, it's through that emotional flow that it all happens energetically and that the seed of the soul. You've, you've summarized it so beautifully. Thank you. <laughs> and exactly. you know when we have that transformation it's a it's a journey sometimes we don't even know we're on until absolutely we're a little farther down the path as it were and then we're like oh my goodness look at me i'm on this yeah. path i and do then, believe that truly and and then as we are transforming our own soul we see other people we witness other people in transformation and it's exciting to see other people succeed in those oh, ways and embrace the light. And I think it's an encouragement for all of us to, Absolutely. Enter, to enter into that transformation and, and the God power more and more as a, 
as a realization consciously, even though we do have our super consciousness. Absolutely. It's always there with us. It's about bringing that awareness to it. And then okay. wouldn't you say that even with so-called death, in terms of that transformation of the soul because of their releasing of the physical body yes. and moving away from the mundane earth plane connection, that there's another transformation that comes about too. Totally. No, totally. Because, I mean, ultimately, um, and that's why really part of the journey is also the level of our own awakening and of our own desire. Yeah. You know, because everybody touches the same journey. And, and so the realization is actually going to be different mm -hmm, mm -hmm. for each individual. And that's why I'm very interested to go and have a look. And, and so therefore the transformation, and, and this is why I love reading books, you see, because they often speak of the transformation of one state of life into another yes. and the letting go you know, the sense of the letting go of the pain of the emotion and the realization. And that actually sometimes that takes time, mm -hmm. but it's also actually sometimes a gradual realization that, that you've moved forward and, and, and that you are in another, another state of being. And that's why often, you know, we, we speak of the spirit world as, as a transitionary state Mm -hmm. where actually it can be very like this world yes yes and that what you experience is is the sense of reunion yes. but also the sense of of continuous reality and that as we move and as we grow that reality begins to change and that as you progress and continue to transform then so too will where you are transformed and I, and I find that rather lovely because, um, you know, we often, people often speak of that moment of transition of being aware of someone and, and this sense of, you know, I remember with my grandmother, I sat with her every day giving her healing. And then I went one day and she said, oh, she said, your uncle Frank's been here, my younger brother. And uh, he died very young, but she loved him. And she said, oh, she, I've been aware of Frank. And then I knew that quite soon she would be taking her transition. And it was as if the spirit was getting her ready mm -hmm. to be aware. And this is why, you know, so often the words that we say can bring the support, the strength and the healing to those who are moving into that time to bring them more into a sense of peace because it's often the fear of the unknown. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But the wonderful thing is, the reality is, that it's a continuation. Yes, because spiritual progression is eternal and infinite. Mm. So there's always something more to learn and grow and be. Yes. Yeah. And, and uh, what is so privileged, really, and I do believe it's a great privilege, is that we're still here, we're still, we're still in the now. Yes. And we have all this opportunity, and we have all this wonderful knowledge. And then we have the ability to make a change. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and and i remember somebody asked a question of the spirit world well when i go and i leave to the spirit um you know will i be with bad people you know and and there's often i mean it's an, an, an interesting thought you know will i be with people who perpetrate you know murder and everything else and and the answer is uh, really and i found it so fascinating that that from the spirit the answer came but what you have to realize is that life is also a conscious reality. And so too is the spirit world. And that as you move from one conscious reality to another, you've already created it before you move to it. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting because that was very similar to creating the future today. Yeah. And that you gravitate to that which you create. Mm -hmm. And that also every thought is known and that the transformation of the soul is open to every single person, mm -hmm. regardless. Yes. But you've got to want to transform. You've got to want to change. And within the reality of it, every thought is known and seen because it's a world of light and mind. Therefore, um, you will know 
when somebody moves, you'll know when somebody's ready to change, mm -hmm. when somebody is ready to grow. And that often you see is, is, is part of communication. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, I love you. Mm -hmm. I never said goodbye, I was angry, forgive me. And I believe that is also part of the process of transforming within the spirit because it's a realization of life. Yeah. and within the journey of life but the the wonderful thing that we have you see is that we have an opportunity to look at it now mm -hmm. and to experience it now and i also believe i would go even further with that and say that that was decided long before you and i were even born when we still existed within that in the realm of light um and I find that fascinating. I see. know it's so fascinating. There's, I know we could talk for hours and hours and hours about all of that. <laughs> and it's been yes. so beautiful. To, I really exactly. appreciate your you sharing your thoughts, and uh, your voice is always so soothing and resonant. And I do feel oh, put people I, into the I, space I, to accept the spiritual words and the spiritual power of the shift and the transformation. So beautifully stated, Colin. Well, thank you very much. And everybody, it's always, you know, just a joy to sit and chat for a little while because, yeah. you know, th that really is the greatest tradition of, of knowledge. You know, it was never written down, it was always spoken. Yes. And so that's why, you know, some of the great religious texts and, 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 and of life and philosophy were not written in the time that they were created. Mm -hmm. because it was the oral tradition of discussion that's right and that's that within the discussion itself you see the there is a learning and a transformation and a transformation and the transformation and and <laughs> it is the transformation cannot wish you greater love as we move towards the time of light yes. the solstice the returning of the light mm -hmm. time of renewal and, and may all of your lives and journey be imbued by that renewal. May you be strengthened as we move through and, and continue our journey. Thank you so much, Colin. Thank you. And for those of you who, who want to find out more about Colin Bates, you can uh, look at his website, mediumcolinbates.com. I know that Colin has a year long mediumship um, class course that is starting up in February 2022. So you can take a look at that on his website. And you can also find out information about my online classes at my website, willowwhite.com. I'll be um, starting up the um, development circles again in February, but I'll be offering some video online classes through December and January, as well as more of these wonderful weekly podcasts. So make sure you like and share and follow. Uh, that way you can be tuned into whenever I go live for these beautiful special events and spiritual awakenings. And I'll see you next week. And thank you so much, Colin, again for being here. Oh, honestly, it I love it's like just chatting over the garden fence. It's beautiful. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you. All right, everyone. Have a beautiful, wonderful day. Bye-bye.